Good morning, kids. Welcome. Today we hear from Jesus in John chapter 3, and this is one of those interesting stories that we find from John's gospel that he records how Jesus met with a man named Nicodemus. And Nicodemus was one of these Pharisees, one of the leaders of the Jewish religion at the time, where and Jesus was Jewish too, and so that connection was there. But as Jesus met with this fellow, Nicodemus had some questions because of what Jesus said. And sometimes when we hear these words, we have to put our thinking caps on and listen a little bit carefully. But reading from John chapter 3, reading verses 1 to 7, Okay, now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Let me put my glasses on. This man came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear it sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Let me say this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's a little bit of a joke running in this passage when you read it in the original Greek language because as we listen to it, sometimes we miss it because when we translate a language from one language to the next, sometimes words in one language mean a little bit more than they do in another language and we kind of have to make choices. When Jesus said, you must be born again, there's a little bit of a joke there because underneath in the Greek language, it can mean one of two things. Either you have to be born again, like a second time, or have be born from above, because again, anothen means from above. And as Jesus said this to Nicodemus, what happened was, is Nicodemus was listening and he was thinking, you know, I, you know, everyone's born once as a little baby from their mom, and so how can I go and be born a second time? After all, you know, I'm, you know, and then you have to kind of make a joke out of this because, and then I think Nicodemus was too, because look at me, I'm already a grown man. Am I supposed to somehow go back into my mom's tummy and then be born a second time and come out and say, ta-da? Jesus said, no, 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 that's not quite what I mean. It's a different birth, not born according to the flesh, according to our, our human nature, the way that we're born from our mums, but instead born from above, that second meaning that was there, born from heaven. And the whole question is, is how can that happen? Well, and Jesus reminds us that it involves being born with water and the spirit. So that he reminded him, don't marvel, don't get, school, get all confused and, and or, or maybe just sitting there saying, whoa, what do you mean, Jesus? Because, you know, when we listen, when we listen to the voice of Jesus, when Jesus did come down from heaven, and that's where he goes later on in some of the verses that are following this, we need to listen to the one who came down from heaven to tell us about things, heavenly things, spiritual things. Sometimes we stumble a little bit like Nicodemus where, you know, as we're growing up, we learn stuff, but we don't know a whole bunch of things, right? And all of us are still growing and we're learning and that happens too as adults. So that when we grow up, there's always something new for us to learn. But sometimes we're a little bit more like Nicodemus than we'd like to admit. Or sometimes when we hear something and we don't quite get it, we kind of think that, you know, what's, what's going on here? Rather than... You know, letting Jesus teach us. And that's where we always have to use our Bibles because that's where Jesus' teaching is. And that's where the Holy Spirit works through the Bible in order to help us to grow. So that instead of just building on the things that we don't understand, because there's always going to be stuff like that, even as adults, even moms and dads, even pastors wrestle with things. And that's the way it's supposed to be. But as we listen to what Jesus says, no, no, it's not just like a regular birth, but a new birth with water and the Spirit. He's talking about baptism. And how do I know that? Well, John, when he records Jesus' words, has a certain way of writing about things. And But 
you know, that's the way that Paul talks about baptism too. That's the way Peter talks about baptism. Peter on Pentecost Day, when people heard all of the people preaching there in their own languages and the Holy Spirit was giving them the ability to speak all those different languages. And he told them about Jesus, how he died. And, you know, Jesus rose again. And this was the one that God said he was going to send. They said, what must we do to be saved? And he told them that we should go and be baptized for the forgiveness of sins, and we receive the Holy Spirit. Baptize means to wash. So water and the Spirit. And it's through baptism as a result that Jesus allows us to be born in a fresh, new way. And what does all that mean? I know sometimes people talk about being born again, and they refer to that as you know, a particular kind of being Christian. But you, when you were baptized, you were born again according to what Jesus says and according to what the Bible teaches. And it's not a matter that all of a sudden you have all these big experiences in your lives that sometimes people who say they're born again say that they have. Sometimes it's okay to be an ordinary Christian where sometimes we don't have all of the big experiences. Sometimes God does give us those too. But it doesn't make us more or less a Christian whether we have the experiences or not because, well, just in the same way as you and me, we didn't choose the first time that we were born. In the same way through baptism, when we're born, it's all God's working. And he gave us his Holy Spirit. He washed away our sins so that we can be born into heaven together with Jesus by when Jesus dies on the cross and rises from the dead. So we listen to that during Lent. That season that we're in right now, the big purple season where we follow Jesus as he goes to die on the cross. It's that wonderful, beautiful, perfect reminder that everything that Jesus has done, he's done so that we can go to heaven. And even that gift of baptism where he says, through baptism, I'm going to make you a part of everything that I've done. Where we're clothed in Christ. Well, that becomes that perfect gift that we can always lean on. So first of all, don't ever forget your baptism. Secondly, don't ever let anyone make uh, make you feel bad because you were baptized as a little child and maybe don't remember being baptized because just like you don't remember being born born doesn't mean that you weren't, okay? But we were born again by what Jesus does through baptism with that promise and we can have that confidence every day, that peace in our hearts every day. Even when we're all concerned and worried about what's going on in the world, we can have that peace knowing that God has already opened that door to heaven. And that in the same way Jesus promises that we'll be with him there, that he also promises that he'll be with us here on earth too. So let's have a word of prayer. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that through these beautiful words recorded by John in the gospel that Jesus not only reminds us and shows us that even when we misunderstand like Nicodemus did, that you continue to love us and you're patient with us and that you, you walk together within us, with us in order to help us grow up with our understanding and all of these things along the way. Bless us so that we would always be ready to to follow with those words and use your words in the Bible so that we would grow up with that understanding too, so that even when things are not perfect in our lives, instead of worrying about them or being tempted to, to try and find our own way to, to get into heaven, that we keep our eyes on Jesus, the one who not only did that work so that we could be with him in, in heaven, but then build on that gift the way he gave it to us in baptism. All these things we pray for in that precious, wonderful name of our friend, our brother, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we say, Amen. We'll see you again soon. Bye for now.